Hello and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. The fridge is stocked and prepped for the week and most of the veggies have been washed and chopped which helps to save time preparing healthy meals during the week. And I like to have fresh ingredients ready to cook for dinner but I also like to have meals ready for breakfast and lunch and I don't do a big meal prep every week but the freezer is running out of freezer meals so today I'm making a few things to restock the freezer. I love just about any type of baked goods, but I try to avoid eating most grains and these grain-free pumpkin muffins really help to satisfy those cravings. And to make sure that the ingredients are well combined, it's a good idea to mix the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients together separately. And I'm using coconut oil in this recipe, so I need to melt it in the microwave for about 30 seconds or so. And while I'm waiting for the coconut oil, I'll combine the rest of the wet ingredients. This recipe calls for one cup of pumpkin, but I don't want to store half a can of pumpkin, so I'm going to double the recipe. And I'll have muffins for the week, and I can store the rest in the freezer. And I'll be sure to leave the information for all of the recipes in the description box. It saves time to cook once and eat twice, so when I do cook, I try to make enough for more than one meal. And I already measured out the dry ingredients for this recipe. For muffin recipes that I have on repeat, <laughs> I'll measure out the dry ingredients for more than one batch at a time. And before I add the rest of the ingredients, I just need to give the jar a shake to combine them. This recipe is for one loaf of pumpkin bread, but muffins take less time to cook and are quick and easy for busy mornings. So I'm going to divide the batter into muffin cups, and I found these jumbo sized muffin cups on Amazon, and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box. They're reusable, they're non-stick and easy to clean, and they take up less space than a muffin pan. And it won't take quite as long to cook the smaller muffins, so I'll cut the time in half, and instead of baking them for 50 to 60 minutes, I'll check them in about 25 minutes. And while I'm waiting for the muffins to cook, I can get started on the soup. And this vegetable soup is quick and simple to prepare. I just need to dump all the ingredients in a pot and bring it to a boil. And I've chopped up most of the veggies, but onions and potatoes are things that I don't usually prep in advance. Onions always stink up the fridge when they are chopped up, and potatoes last longer if you store them without washing them first. I'm using equal parts onion, celery, carrots, and potatoes, about two cups each, and I'm adding diced tomatoes today. And I just cut up all the veggies into bite-sized pieces. I'm using chicken stock, but vegetable broth is another good option, and I ended up using two quarts of broth to cover all the veggies. And I used dried parsley today, but I like to use fresh parsley when I have it, and I used coconut aminos, and I added a bay leaf to season the soup today. But a tablespoon of Italian seasoning would add more flavor, and a little bit of hot sauce would certainly spice things up. And once everything is in the pot, I just need to cover and let everything simmer until the vegetables are fork tender. 
This next chicken recipe is something that I don't make all that often because it doesn't stretch very far for all the effort, but it is one of my favorites when I want something a little extra special for dinner, and I just need to butterfly and flatten four large chicken breasts. I'm using a meat tenderizer, but a rolling pin or a small skillet would work just as well, and I just want to flatten out the chicken breast so that it's all the same thickness, and the plastic wrap will help contain the mess. Whenever I'm in the kitchen, I wash my hands and the tools with hot soapy water before I start preparing something else. And having a sink full of soapy water makes it easy to avoid more cleanup so that I can reuse the same dishes. And once the chicken is all flattened out, it'll be time to make the filling, and I'm using half an avocado and about two ounces of soft goat cheese, but you could substitute the cheese for sun-dried tomato, or you could use pesto as a filling. And I just mash the cheese and avocado into a creamy paste, and I'll divide the mixture evenly between each chicken breast. As a rule, we don't eat dairy, but we do use cheese to add a little bit of flavor, so I don't need to use any seasoning today. But a little oregano or a few pepper flakes would be a nice complement, but the bacon and cheese will add plenty of flavor, so I don't need to add salt. I add the mixture to the middle of the chicken and spread it out into an even layer, and then I can roll it up. And to hold everything together, I like to wrap it with a strip of bacon, but toothpick would work just as well. I wrap each chicken with a piece of bacon in each direction, and then I wrap it back up with plastic wrap until I'm ready to cook it. And I usually cook the chicken and have it for dinner the same day, but it will keep in the fridge for a few days, and it will last in the freezer for a few months. This recipe is the best when it's hot out of the oven, so I don't usually cook the chicken until we're ready to eat it. And I just bake the defrosted chicken in an oven-safe dish at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes or so, or until the chicken is firm and the bacon is crispy. And before serving the chicken, it needs to rest for about 5 minutes or so so that it has time to reabsorb its juices. The muffins are ready when they pass the toothpick test, and when the toothpick comes out clean, it's time to place them on a wire rack to cool down, and I need to remove the muffins from the baking cups while they're still hot. If they sit in the cups for too long, the steam will make them soggy, but I also need to use the baking cups for the next recipe. And before I get started on the next recipe, I needed to finish up the soup, and roast garlic is a great way to boost the flavor in soups. So I'm going to add about four cloves of roast garlic to the soup, and there's no need to peel the garlic. Just give it a little squeeze and it pops right out of the skin, and then I can give it a quick stir to dissolve the garlic into the soup. And I don't want to overcook the soup and end up with mushy vegetables. So I want to turn off the heat when the carrots and the potatoes are still firm, but fork tender. 
I'm always looking for more ways to get leafy greens into our diet and adding kale to the soup is a good way to do that. So I'm just going to chop up some kale into bite-sized pieces before I add it to the soup. And the kale doesn't need to cook, it just needs to wilt down. And I'm going to add the kale to the soup before I freeze it, but I could wait and add it when I reheat the soup. We're not always home to make breakfast and lunch, so I try to prepare something in advance that's easy to grab and go. And these egg cups are easy to make and freeze for those days when there's just not a lot of time. And I need to start by cooking a half a pound of pork sausage. And while the sausage is cooking, I can chop up an onion into a small dice. And there are so many options to add to these eggs, but today I'm just using kale, onion, sausage, and goat cheese. And the sausage and cheese has plenty of flavor, so I'm not going to add Add any additional seasonings. And once the sausage has been chopped up into tiny pieces, I can add the onions to the pan. And I'll just cook them for a few minutes more until they're translucent. And while the onions are cooking, I can chop up the kale into bite-sized pieces. And when the onions are cooked through, I can add the kale, and the kale will reduce in size as it wilts down, but I don't want to overcook it, so I'll turn off the heat before I stir in the kale so that I can retain that bright green color. There are different ways to assemble the egg cups, but I think it's easier to divide the mixture first, so I'm going to add the mixture to the cups before I add the eggs. The baking cups I'm using are much larger than standard muffins, so I'll be able to add two eggs to each cup. And whenever I need to make a large batch of scrambled eggs, I like to use a blender. And I add all the eggs and then blend them on the lowest setting until the yolks and the egg whites have blended together into a uniform color. And it takes longer on low speed, but the higher speeds will whip the eggs up into a froth. I wasn't quite sure if I could fit two eggs in each cup, so I started with a dozen eggs, and once I was able to divide the mixture evenly between six cups, I repeated the process for the second half. The eggs need to cook in the oven for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees, which gave me time for a quick cleanup before I moved on to the next recipe. And a quick hack for cleaning the blender is to add warm water and a few drops of dish soap to the blender and turn the blender on high for a few minutes. This soup recipe makes enough to feed a small army, but it can be stored in the freezer for up to two months, so it's a great meal prep option. And I put off buying these super cubes forever, and all I can say is I wish I had them sooner. These silicone freezer trays hold up to two cups, which is the perfect size for individual servings. And with all of the cold weather we've been having, I can stock up the freezer with plenty of soup.
I filled up the trays and had enough left over for later in the week, and once the soup was frozen, I removed them from the mold so that I could vacuum seal them. Removing the air helps to prevent freezer burns so that foods can last three to five times longer in the freezer. And this is our second food saver. The first one finally gave out, so we replaced it with this newer model. And the bags are reusable, which helps to reduce waste, but I can label the contents of the soup at the top so that when I cut the bag open later, I can still relabel it. I can leave the soup in the bag and defrost it in the fridge so that I can reheat it in a pot on the stove, or I can remove it from the bag and defrost it in the microwave. This last recipe was a bit impulsive because I have never made jambalaya before, but I had all of the ingredients so I decided to give it a try. And I took a few shortcuts on this recipe, but the end result was still amazing. It's packed full of protein and flavor and it came together quickly, but instead of cooking the chicken and sausage separately, I decided to brown the chicken in the pan and then add the sausage to cook them both at the same time. And when the chicken was finished cooking, instead of using another dish, I just transferred the mix to the same pan that I used earlier. And then it was time to add the holy trinity of peppers, onions, and celery to the pan. And I don't really think the color of the pepper matters too much, but the soup has a red base, so green peppers will look better in the soup. But I had to use red bell peppers instead of green because that's just what I had in the fridge. And the recipe calls for Cajun seasoning, but I like to substitute blackened seasoning because it has plenty of flavor, but it has less salt. I added the seasonings to the veggies and let them cook for a few minutes. And when the onions were just about translucent, I added about four cloves of minced garlic to the pan and let the garlic cook a few more minutes before I added the remaining ingredients. And once the veggies were cooked, I added the chicken broth and a bay leaf, but the recipe calls for crushed tomatoes, but all I had was diced tomatoes, so I used an immersion blender to crush the tomatoes and then added them to the pot with the rest of the ingredients. I used brown rice instead of white rice, but you could skip the rice altogether. But once I added the rice, I let it cook for about 20 minutes until the rice was done. The egg cups were ready to come out of the oven about the same time I added the rice to the pot. So while I left them on the counter to cool, I put most of the muffins in a freezer bag to store in the freezer, but I left a few out for the week and there's no preservatives in the muffins, so they won't last very long at room temperature, but they'll last about a week in the fridge. Once the rice was done cooking, I added the chicken and the sausage back to the pan and then I turned off the heat and added the shrimp. And the shrimp was still frozen, but the pot will stay hot long enough to finish cooking the shrimp. Mm -hmm. 
I always like to start meal prep with an empty dishwasher so I can put the dirty dishes into the dishwasher, which helps keep the countertops clear and I don't end up with a mountain of dishes to clean up at the end. But I do have a few things that I need to put away and a few dishes to take care of. The parts of the immersion blender can't be submerged in water, so I run the immersion blender in soapy water to clean the blades. The egg cups will last in the fridge for up to four days, so I'll leave a few out to eat this week and I'll freeze the rest. And to defrost them, I'll just leave them in the fridge overnight when we need them. And to reheat them, I can put them in the microwave for a minute or two. I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. na, na, na. And I wondered how you're always right It gets me I couldn't see what you saw in me But you showed me how to believe Still gets me When I look back I can see It is hard to share my thoughts Ooh, na, na, na. It's like cutting a wound in a bleeding heart It gets me But I know Just give me some time cause I need to know That you're staying
after a long meal prep, the last thing I want to do is cook something for dinner, so I try to have something like this jambalaya ready to eat, and this meal prep took longer than most because most of the recipes were very hands-on. Meal prep goes much faster when foods cook themselves, so roasting veggies in the oven and letting soup simmer on the stove goes much faster, but I have a freezer full of meals that I can reheat. And that's all for today. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today. And I hope to see you next time. Yeah.